Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch One, and thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at a watch that embodies the best of big. This is the Royal Oak Offshore from Audemars Piguet, 42 millimeters in full titanium with bracelet. This watch, reference 26170ST, is a bit of an anomaly in as much as it's a Royal Oak Offshore on a full bracelet. They're usually on straps. And in titanium, it features a full titanium bracelet to match. The combination of the titanium case and the full titanium bracelet makes this an extraordinary example of an uncommon and uncommonly desirable Royal Oak Offshore. Now, on my wrist, 6 and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, the watch looks big, but it sits light. And having just reviewed a Rolex Oyster Perpetual on a full steel bracelet, I have to say that I can't really tell the difference in mass between the two. Although this watch dwarfs the Rolex, the fact that it's all rendered in lightweight titanium means that, in terms of weight, it's almost a wash. So this is a very comfortable watch to wear on the wrist. You can see how broad the case is. It really spreads its mass around with no hot spots or pressure points, so it's a very agreeable companion. It has impressive wrist presence, but it doesn't have oppressive wrist presence. And that's the key to the 42 millimeter offshore, especially on this supple bracelet. It's an ergonomic triumph, and if you like the look, you'll love the feel. Now, I want to emphasize that a big part of the ergonomic success of this watch is the bracelet itself. The bracelet really only weighs about as much as a conventional hornback alligator strap with a steel single deployant. So even in terms of mass, the full bracelet becomes a wash with the leather, albeit with greater comfort. And here's the key. You can see how close the manufacturing tolerances are. Audemars Piguet finishes each link by hand, and so they control the quality at the micro level. You can hardly see the white board behind these links, but look at the bottom. And herein lies the trick. As close as these links conform to each other, leaving little space on the top, each one has a channel that's been finished into it on the bottom so that there's a gap between the links, allowing space for your skin, for wrist hair, and this is how such a tightly coupled bracelet on the top somehow manages to avoid pulling wrist hair and pinching skin on the bottom. That's Audemars Piguet's attention to detail, and that's the shakeout and the end benefit of building Royal Oak and Royal Oak Offshore bracelets for over 40 years. Now, this watch also has an outstanding clasp, double deployant with clamshell action. As you close it, you can hear those satisfying snaps. And then once closed, you can see it's almost completely seamless, like the crown clasp mechanism on the Rolex Oyster bracelet, it barely betrays the point at which the bracelet parts, meaning it reads as a continuity all the way around, virtually uninterrupted by the parting of the clasp. Nothing but a high quality engraved brush finished AP marquee and the twin pull tabs to give away the game and let you know where the bracelet parts. Seamless, beautiful, clever, that's the Audemars Piguet way, and that's the Royal Oak Offshore. Although many big watches are satisfied to simply be big and bodacious, the bottom line is that this one is finished with the same craft quality that you would see on a Royal Oak Jumbo, or for that matter, a Jules Audemars Minute Repeater. This is an extraordinarily handcrafted piece of workmanship, and it's one of the reasons I really like the bracelet, because while the hornback alligator is gorgeous and hand-stitched, so much more hand-finishing goes into the metal bracelet, raising the value of the timepiece immensely. Finish on a full bracelet like this is one of the reasons that the 1972 original stainless steel Royal Oak was priced at a precious metal price point because of the amount of effort and human labor and human labor, craft, artisanal, specialized, high value human labor that went into finishing the case and the bracelet. So the bracelet doesn't just add versatility in as much as it can get wet, but it also adds a lot of value because of the degree of finishing. Things like these mirror polished camphers on the flanks, the brushing on the top, the regularity of the taper. There's really, I can't even see a step between the taper of each of these hand finished links. It just fluidly blends down into a wasp waisted taper as it moves away from the lugs. And that's all due to the amount of hand attention that's given to the finishing process. But moving inboard, you can see the detail on the case, the alternating and contrasting finishes on the various facets. And you can see that continues on the bezel, polished on its flanks, brushed on its tops. You can see the inset high polished stainless steel bezel bolts. It's all about the nuance of contrast and the detailing that only a human eye and a skilled hand can impart to a watch case 
bezel, bracelet, all evident here in this Royal Oak Offshore. Very mechanical, very blocky. It's bolder watch than the original Royal Oak. What was originally just hinted at on the Gerald Genta original, just that sliver of black bezel gasket that you could see on the original watch, becomes a huge structural member and an integral part of the layered design on the offshore. The bezel uh, gasket is fully expressed, big and bold like everything else here. Now the dial is without a doubt the main event. It's the part that co-equally with the octagonal bezel defines a Royal Oak and a Royal Oak Offshore. And as we move down from the bezel through the tachometer ring, it's concave and it swoops down to a mega tapisserie grid. But you see distinctive contrast here, metallic and circular grained on the tachometer. It gives way to a gloss finish on the tapisserie. Now the petite tapisserie that you'll see on the conventional Royal Oak features a small waffle cut grid or hobnail pattern. The mega tapisserie of the Royal Oak Offshore takes that to a new level with bigger individual details. Each of those blocks is larger. Each of the channels between them is deeper. And you can see that gloss pattern. As I move it through the light, you can see how each channel between the blocks of the waffle cut catch the light beautifully. They almost illuminate as the light catches them, and that's the benefit of having gloss finish on the strong geometry of the dial base. You can really see how it just catches the light and comes to life. Just like the full white gold Arabic numerals for each of the hour markers, corresponding white gold hands, and the chapter rings polished of each of the subdials. There's a lot of contrast going on here, and it's done entirely through the use of grayscales, which is impressive and takes a delicate artist's eye. Now, normally contrast would be something clumsy, like the difference between green and red, or white and black. But Audemars Piguet rides the, ins the entire spectrum of grayscale, starting with the white of the tachometer print, moving to the metallic gray, almost gunmetal blue-gray of the tachometer scale beneath, the gloss anthracite, the, the polished look of the tapisserie, the black luminova used on the Arabic numerals and the hands themselves, that's the rarely seen black variant of superluminova loom, and then the black of each subdial, enlivened by just enough shocks of red on the chronograph seconds hand, just the tip, as well as each subdial hand. The watch really comes to life and it's done with a contrast that's never dramatic, but progressive. This watch is subtle in so many ways and it's a bit ironic given the bold geometry of the case and the larger than life image of the Royal Oak Offshore that it could simultaneously boast so much subtlety, but it does. And that's the mark of a Swiss high horology house. As one of the holy trinity of Swiss high horology, along with Vacheron and Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet has that craft finishing tradition. Now, while neither Vacheron nor Patek would build something quite this audacious, the bottom line is the same degree of finish that goes into those watches in the formal references for which they're known goes into this outrageous oversized sports watch. The Royal Oak Offshore is big, but it's also beautiful. And inside, it's just as appealing. Well, this watch does have a solid case back. What you'll find within is a beautifully finished Audemars Piguet in-house caliber 3126. This watch has approximately a 50 to 55 hour power reserve. It's designed for the way that people wear their sports watches today. With a free sprung escapement and a gyromax style balance wheel, you can shock this watch, you can jolt it, you can wear it while jogging, you can wear it while skiing. The bottom line is it has that inherent shock resistance to shake off a knock and also avoid alterations to its permanent timing via a free sprung escapement, via that full balance bridge dual anchored on both sides that's holding the balance wheel, ceramic rotor bearings that are unlubricated, operating at high efficiency with unidirectional winding. Every part of this movement is as beautiful as it is advanced. Now, Audemars Piguet finishes the case, the bracelet, the dial, the bezel to an exquisite standard so too is the movement finished to this standard. Now, while you can't see it, I like to say the ultimate mark of integrity in a watchmaker is, and by that I mean a manufacturer, is the willingness to impart fine finish to pieces of the watch that the client will not see. And if you were to pull this case back, you'd be treated to the same view that you'll see on the display case back, contemporary offshore. You'll see the 22 karat gold winding rotor blazon with the Audemars and Piguet family coat of arms. You'll see the tight perlage pattern across the base plate. You'll see gorgeous circular grained wheels, straight grained levers. And of course, you'll see the incredible anglage 
the incredible decouvrage of the screw countersinks, polished to a mirror shine. Anywhere you would see a sharp sheer ledge, rounded off, mirror polished, hand finished. And that's what sets the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak offshore apart. Just as finely finished as its predecessor, the Royal Oak, it gives up nothing. It is the total package. Big, but also beautiful. It's fantastic, and it's fine. See this Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore, full titanium, with corresponding titanium bracelet and gloss anthracite mega tapisserie dial on our website, Watch You Want.